Hello people of the earth and welcome back to QuickSafe TV. My name is Mike and you're watching my annual video. Today we're taking a look at Robothorium, a game by French developers from the Goblins studio. Goblins studio has been involved in several projects up until now, but Robothorium seems to be their second developed title. Previous game was also an RPG, but is significantly more simple in gameplay and in its features in comparison to Robothorium. To get this out of the way, full transparency, I have received the code for the game for free and made this video after playing the game for a little over 5 hours. But I am not paid to sell it to you, so the following video is my honest to god opinion. Now, Robothorium is a game about building up your team of sentient robots in an attempt to overthrow the human tyranny on Earth. The robots, despite being called that, possess complex personalities and quirks, so they effectively are sentient beings. In-game, you take control of the Saya system, a sentient AI that will, or at least will attempt to, lead your people to salvation. In two words, the game is about fighting countless enemies, building skills of your characters, finding and crafting items, and building the team strong enough to utilize combos and survive long enough to reach the final boss. Robothorium is a nice mix between classic JRPG, roguelike and management genres, and it gets several things really well. The role-playing system, for example, is by far my favorite aspect of Robothorium, because it's just so well designed. You get to choose from about 10 robots, all of which have several levels of stat-modifying elements on top of them. These elements are their personality, think something like Pokemon cities, their equipment, and the talent build that the player is free to customize as he likes. The personalities and gear are both highly randomized and it is up to the player to decide what type of combination he would want to go for. Really, it's not a trick. In this game, just like in any other great JRPG such as Final Fantasy or Sony, there are a lot to work with. That means that each character has around 2 to 3 and sometimes even more build paths that are effective and are tailored to specific team compositions and playstyles. If you pay attention and really explore the system in Robothorium, you can build a team that synergizes extremely well together and breezes through everything with ease. The roguelike aspect of the game is about making do with what you find and trying to optimize the random gear and robots you find while carefully selecting the build path to match the findings. Every playthrough will be different because of random starting robots and because of random loot that you will find while exploring. Important to note though that this is one of those long playing roguelikes where there's a lot of items to farm and reputation to earn. That means that the length of a run in Robothorium is not 1 to 3 hours, but more like 3 to 15 hours, conservatively speaking. I personally don't really like long running roguelikes very much, but Robothorium as a whole works very well. The management aspect is all about making the most of what you can find, craft or buy. Crafting, mission selecting, shopping and a lot of other things too, like sending your robots off, Fallout Shelter style, are all integral parts of the game. While you go on the combat missions, you get to decide how much risk you're willing to take in order to earn all the loot or explore all the rooms on the level. This way you are building your party up and preparing to tackle greater challenges as you advance in the story and in your understanding of the game. The story is not randomly generated and is designed to give you a bare minimum to work with as well as to help you farm some reputation with the factions. Standing with factions then unlocks prestige perks and utility skills that help you get more loot or fight more effectively. It is also important to complete the story missions to advance in the game, so that's one aspect of the game that is handcrafted for the player to enjoy. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Robothorium has quite a few issues that screw the overall fun experience that the game is. For example, its interface, which is extremely unwieldy at times and is downright sometimes not enjoyable to play with. Like when you try to browse item shop and figure out if you need that new gatling laser or a sweet shield generator, only to suddenly realize that there's no good way to compare the items in the shop to the gear you have currently equipped, making the whole shop unbelievably unenjoyable waste of time. Or when you explore the level and search for items, only then realizing that the best and most you will ever get is not for exploration, but for completing the mission itself. This makes looting much less fun than it should be, because every time you complete a mission, you just get a dump of items, which somehow feel unrewarding and shallow. 
Undoubtedly, the best aspect of any RPG is about finding and earning this new sweet gear. And when the game just throws it at you, it just it lacks this oomph, it lacks this fun aspect of it. Another thing that bugs me is just how many basic player and enemy abilities include buffs or debuffs in them. It's not generally a bad thing to do something like that as a one-off type of a design choice in an RPG, but when over 80% or even 90% of abilities apply positive or negative status effects? I think you can relate how seeing 10, not exaggerating, negative status effects can throw you off and confuse the hell out of you. This is even more compounded by the fact that lots of battles will be 5 versus 6, that's 11 units on the screen, each having 3 to 4 and sometimes over 10 status effects, making the system a mess. These things, although a pain in the ass, do not really ruin the game, but they definitely make a lot less enjoyable. It is my hope that some or all of these issues get tweaked and adjusted post-launch, but I really don't know if that will ever happen. On the bright side, however, Robothorium has some great music and smooth animation, both really pleasant to hear and look at as you play the game. The game is by no means a technological marvel or visual presentation masterpiece, but it feels and plays it really well. There is no input lag, abilities are fun to play with and some ability combos that you can pull off are downright nasty. The best thing about Robothorium, for me, was the fact that it is very addicting. I don't know exactly why, but the game has a very good way of pulling you in and not letting you go after you start playing. In many ways, I think this is the biggest thing that matters in any game at all. Really, it is the fun factor and how engrossing it is, and Robothorium does definitely get it very well. All in all, I think if you're a fan of a JRPG genre or you're looking for a new roguelike experience, you should definitely take a look at Robothorium. Hey, if worst comes to pass, you can just refund it, right? But I don't think that you will. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and listening. Extra thanks to the Goblin Studio for reaching out and giving me the key to give me the opportunity to explore the game before its final release. Thanks a lot. I now can't wait to play your new game, Legend of Keepers. This game looks bomb. It's kind of like a mix between Darkest Dungeon and Dungeon Keeper. I'm not really sure, but I'm curious to see how it will turn out. Have a great day, y'all, and I'll see you all soon. Next year, hopefully.